This week, I'm diving in Dominica, a phrase which has inspired many people to ask, so is this your first trip to the Dominican Republic? The Dominican Republic is located on Hispaniola along with Haiti, one of the most popular tourist destinations in the Caribbean and a short flight from Miami. But that's not where we're going. Dominica is a little known but a completely different island. One can be forgiven for not knowing about it since googling Dominica brings up more results for the Dominican Republic. It's pretty small and steep. 47 kilometers north to south, 26 kilometers east to west. That's 29 miles by 16 miles to you and me. And 4,700 feet high. It took me over two hours to go from the airport in the northeast to Scott's Head, the southern point, maybe 30 kilometers as the parrot flies, but over 60 kilometers by windy mountain road. They say an hour and a half but anyone driving that fast around corners with thousand foot drop-offs, with steering wheel on the wrong side of the car, cars coming at you in the right lane, is an idiot. The driving is one thing, but the diving is another. One of the reasons that the diving is so excellent here is the relatively small number of tourists and dive shops and the steep terrain above the water extends below, making a very dramatic underwater landscape that is unspoiled by flocks of tourists. Even better, I'm diving in the Soufrier Scotshead Marine Reserve, a protected area comprised of a volcanic crater literally over a thousand feet deep that is a five minute boat ride from the dock over water that is as calm as Puget Sound, but, you know, without the massive current. Nature Island Dive takes us out for a typical two-tank diving morning, but get this, they bring the boat back to the dock, and we walk across the street to the dive shop for our surface interval. Something I thought was weird at first, but after doing it once, I decided it's the best way to dive. Between dives, put in your lunch order, and have a banana smoothie and a lionfish sandwich after the diving. There are about 17 different dive sites listed on the map on their wall. A few on the slightly rougher Atlantic, but most in the much calmer Caribbean side. And I overheard the team identifying a potential new site after Simon went on a coral rescue mission one day. More on that later. These spots are all, like I said before, a very short ride away from the lionfish sandwiches. And all very dramatic. Loaded with exciting sea life. Lots of things I'd never seen before. And lots more sightings of things I'd seen a few times. Like spotted moray eels, I saw two or three of them every single dive. Some of them with their head poking out like you normally see, just a couple inches. Some of them just swimming right out in the open. And I had never seen a sharp-tailed eel before. And I saw several of those throughout and lots of them swimming right out in the open. And then they also had uh, golden spotted eels that I didn't get to see. But the folks that stayed after me posted some pictures on Facebook. I'm Jealous Lisa Marie. I had never seen or been pointed out a living conch before. I can see the eyeballs sticking out of this one, even if you can't. The odd sea cucumber. Alright, I guess all sea cucumbers are odd. And of course, all the standard reef fish. The trumpet fish, the trigger fish, the porcupine fish, the file fish, the damsel fish, the wrasses, blah blah blah. But you know, in abundance, in large, large quantities.
And I did see more seahorses than all the rest of my life put together on those reefs. The lionfish sandwiches don't make themselves. The dive team, when they're not pointing out things that need to be videoed, they were out catching lionfish for everyone's lunch. Lionfish are super invasive and even though it's a marine reserve, they need to be caught and eaten. We see that no matter where we go in the Caribbean. I had never even heard of a basket star before. And I got to see one. I, could, I got to see a few. And I got to see a few of them at night when they're out doing their thing. The gang and I took one night dive, which is a great experience. You see things that aren't out during the day, like the slipper lobster. And then you get to see other things that are just trying to sleep. The thing about sea turtles is you just want to hang out with them forever. And I got to do that so many times there were sea turtles that came up and I took good pictures of a lot of them. And the night dive, I had a little tiny baby sea turtle that just came off the beach. He was so cute. He was up in my BC. And then all the girls from the dive jumped in the water to see all the little baby sea turtles that were out swimming about for the first time in their lives. It was just the coolest thing ever. As I may have mentioned, the big draw to diving Dominica is the dramatic structure of the reefs. Often listed as a top 10 world diving site and under consideration as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's just spectacular and words are no match for the video, so I will STFU.
We all want coral reefs to last forever. One of the reasons I started doing so much dive travel lately is to see it before it's all dead. Which is the way things are going. Luckily there are a few people trying to do something about the problem. And the team at Nature Island Dive is among them. Here they are doing their part to monitor and treat the coral disease. Simon was kind enough to sit down with me for a few minutes and tell me kind of what he's doing. In the last few years, we had one of the most devastating coral diseases called stony coral tissue loss disease um, reach Dominica in, in 2020, 2021. Um, and so very rapidly we saw the need to really move, move into conservation. So I've always been a conservationist. I've always been somebody who's, you know, reduce, reduce your plastic use and, you know, make sure your lifestyle is as less damaging as it possibly could be. But then in the last couple of years with this disease, with global warming, with climate change, uh, the really, really rapid that we've seen this year, the rapid um, rise in temperatures in the oceans, um, we've seen a lot of detrimental effects on the reefs here. So we studied uh, during COVID, we didn't have a lot to do. There was no, um, very little clientele, no travel. Um, and yet I managed to keep the dive shop open and keep my staff employed, but we needed to come up with projects and keep everybody a little bit busy. So um, we really studied a lot about coral. And uh, honestly, four years ago, I didn't know much about the different species of coral. and. I knew every single fish, every single critter, their habits, where they live. I mean, you know, 35 years of diving um, in Dominica. So, uh, but I didn't know much about coral. And then this disease came along and I realized I, we had to change really the way we approach diving. So my, my goal was to integrate tourism into conservation. And there's, unfortunately, there's this big separation between conservation and dive tourism. Um, dive, a lot of dive shops don't really do much in the preservation of the way they make their money, which is in coral reefs. So when Sony Coral Tissue Loss came along, uh, here in Dominica, we don't have much uh, human resource within the fisheries division. They don't have boats, they don't have many divers. So there's nothing they could do about it really. So I approached them and said that I wanted to use treatment to, te to, to treat Sony Coral Tissue Loss disease. Uh, and really empower my dive masters and my, my entire team to treat while taking tourist diving. Which I saw them out there doing every single day. Now you can see the whole interview, plus lots more footage and information on the beautiful island of Dominica, both above and below the water, in the extended version, the director's cut, so to speak, of this video. Until then, bubbles up, buttercup.